Let's talk. Let's talk. Hello and welcome to a new season of Let's Talk. My name is Chris Satney and of course we begin this new season with the subject of a regional agreement on access to information, public participation and justice in environmental matters in Latin America and the Caribbean and this is also known as ESCASU agreement. Of course we will hear more about that agreement as we introduce our guest, and she is Kate Wilson, who is the legal officer with the Department of Sustainable Development. Welcome to our program. Thank you very much, Chris. All right. It's a long, a long name, but much significance, I imagine. Tell us about the Eskazu Agreement. Well, the Eskazu Agreement, as you, you, you did in fact see, it is, it is a very long-winded <laughs> um, agreement. It is uh, the Regional Agreement on Access to Information, Public Participation and Justice in Environmental Matters, not only in the Caribbean, but also in Latin America. And it is called the Eskazu Agreement because it was endorsed uh, in sometime in March at a high-level segment in Eskazu, which is a town in San Jose, Costa Rica. Okay. Understand. Now, what is the relevance of the agreement, you asked? Definitely, I would like to know that. The agreement is relevant because, first and foremost, it affirms the value of a regional and multilateral approach to sustainable development. Mm -hmm. It also aims to combat inequality and discrimination and to guarantee the rights of every person to a healthy environment as well as to sustainable development. In fact, it places equality at the core of sustainable development. And it is so significant that John Knox, who is the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights, he has hailed this agreement as being one of the most important human rights agreements as well as one of the most important environmental agreements in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. the, the, the whole facet of human rights and the environment, link that for us, why, why is that? Right, because envir the environment and environmental rights mm -hmm. is essentially in some countries, it is already part of the constitution as a human right. Mm -hmm. We have not reached that stage in St. Lucia and I hopefully that we will get to that. But what we are claiming to do and what this agreement is trying to do is for us to now begin to see uh, environmental rights mm -hmm. as an essential human right. right, the right to a healthy environment as a mm -hmm. basic human right. Just as we have all the right, all the, the right to food, the right, right to water, the mm -hmm. right to clothing, the right to housing. Definitely. Um, give us some of the key provisions of that agreement. Okay, so first of all, the agreement, as I said, it has three facets. It has one, um, uh, access to information, mm -hmm. uh, public participation, and justice. So let us look at what the provisions in terms of access to information mm -hmm. is. Okay. So the first thing is the agreement, it, 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 it talks about um, making information widely available to mm -hmm. the public. Of course, each country, if they say, for example, if St. Lucia decides mm -hmm. to sign on to that agreement, St. Lucia will have to put in place uh, the proper framework so that people say someone, uh, uh, a human uh, a person who is interested in the environment or even say an organization like the National Trust, mm -hmm. if they have some information that they want to, and an appropriate authority would be, a competent authority would be decide, would be um, established in terms of, I imagine. of, um, having, of keeping that information, mm -hmm. of being um, responsible yes, for responsible that information. For That's that, right. Like a hub. That's right. And so you will find that um, that entity, say the National Trust or uh, a concerned citizen, would be able through a, a recognized procedure, be able to ask of that competent authority information, say, on hazardous material in the, in the mm -hmm. communities, say, on a project that might adversely affect the environment, so that they would be able to do that. So essentially it is giving access rights what to would that information? What would that information do? That information would be able to let the, um, the, the, the person or the entity be more informed in terms of one, 
what is the environmental impact that mm -hmm. is that is going to what is what is what is the impact not only on the environment on yeah. right but also on the health of persons mm -hmm. living in the area you, you know so it anything that would affect the community as a whole um, Ms. Wilson, tell us about the, the, the relevance as far as St. Lucia is concerned, you know, with its size and the other countries of Latin America, they are a lot larger. Um, what's really the relevance? I know you touched on it earlier, but just expound a bit first. Okay, now first of all, uh, St. Lucia being a small island state, particularly when it goes out on a regional level and on an international level, tend to be negotiating in a block not on its own. Mm -hmm. Usually we, we negotiate with other countries who have similar interests with us. Mm -hmm. So hence the reason why uh, ECLAC, the Economic Commission for Latin America, who is the technical secretariat for this agreement, the Escazú agreement, mm -hmm. what they have tried to do in, 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 in putting this agreement together is to now get the countries to, to together, come together on a regional level so that they have a, a stronger negotiating basis. Very so when good. they go out on an international mm -hmm. scale, they have a means by which they can mm -hmm. negotiate for environmental they that matters. Little dot on the map. That's right. They're That's not very just very that insignificant very dot. So. And the more, even more important thing is that it was an agreement which was forged by the people themselves. Ah, okay. And the public, the civil society was very instrumental and very visible mm -hmm. in making their voices heard in terms of what the provisions in that agreement were. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's very significant because it's one of the, 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 one of the agreements that, ha that addresses issues of environmental defenders. Very good. We'll talk more about that environmental defenders right after this break. You're watching Let's Talk. We're back after this. The regional agreement on access to information, public participation, and justice in environmental matters in Latin America and the Caribbean will be open for signature this coming September 2018 through to September 2020 at the United Nations headquarters in New York. Join the conversation as we discuss what this agreement means for us in St. Lucia. We want you, students, academia, the public sector, the private sector, the St. Lucia National Trust, civil society, all stakeholders. Join me, Kate Wilson, and the Department of Sustainable Development as we count down to September. And welcome back to Let's Talk as we continue our conversation with uh, Kate Wilson, who is the um, legal officer for the Department of Sustainable Development. We talk, continue our, our uh, conversation on S. Kazoo. So you were speaking and you were um, bringing light up to uh, environmental um, defenders. It's really good that we have people who stand up for the, for the environment. In, yes, in the, yes, in this, Chris. In this world. And uh, whilst we do not have, we have organizations like the St. Lucia National Trust in St. Lucia mm -hmm. at the forefront of the environmental issues. And we have, I'm sure, a number of other groups. But you find that in places like, say, Honduras and Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, even Costa Rica, you find people have actually been killed wow. agitating for environmental rights. Mm -hmm. And so one of the main things about this regional agreement is that there are provisions made for protection for certain persons mm. for the for the competent authorities and the countries to give adequate protection so that these people if their lives are being threatened mm -hmm. that there is some sort of provision in terms of the society and protect the, the, voice. to protect their voice right and also that they would have access to justice like if they are inappropriately um in if they are if they they arrested right, uh, or yes. something like mm, that something so of, that nature. of that nature that mm. they have redress they have legal redress uh, even whilst the negotiations were happening in 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 Costa Rica mm -hmm. uh, uh, sometime in March uh, on March the 4th that was the anniversary of one of the defenders who were killed in Honduras agitating for environmental rights so this agreement is perhaps one of the first agreements that has provisions for the uh, protection for mm -hmm. environmental defenders. Where are we, St. Lucia, as far as that is concerned? I know we have a lot of work to do, but mm -hmm. as a legal officer, you would know, um, as far as St. Lucia is having a voice in that way. Well, what we, we have to do, we have a Freedom of Information Act. We have, um, so we have 
legislation in place that allows for for information that if the public right. wants information mm -hmm. that we can access information That's right. but if we are going to sign this agreement and we are going to go into uh, not only just signing but we are going to ratify and it, when it comes into force we would need to put in place on a national level or at a national level not only the legal framework but the also, also the institutional frameworks to give effect to that agreement definitely so we would have to look at our laws and see, we don't want to duplicate many eff efforts and do the same thing over yeah. and over. So we will look at what we already have and see what is it that we need to do to be able to allow the public, persons on the street, civil society, anybody who's interested mm. in environmental information, how they will be able to access it from the government. Not just that, well, not necessarily the government, but from whoever that yes. competent authority Whatever will be. That's right. Mm. And not only that, that agreement allows for public participation. And not just when the decision is made, but at the level, at all levels. So at, so at the consultative level, at the level of decision making, so that the public will be involved. So we have to put in place a framework to allow that's the public. Right. They and must then, have a voice. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then also the access to justice part of it. You know, one of the things that prevents people from getting proper access to justice is one, legal standing, that they don't have legal that's standing. Right. Secondly, the cost, the high yeah. cost of going Fear to court. Well. That's right. So all these things we would have to put, if St. Lucia is serious about this, this, this agreement, which I believe they are, mm -hmm. we would have to put in place those frameworks that allow for access to justice, proper access to justice, which means we would have to look at um, uh, legal, we would have to look at um, how we are going to address the cost issue. When it, so we would have to look at um, uh, how persons Some who Some kind of a facility. Facility for yeah. that. So, so persons who cannot afford to go mm -hmm. to, to, um, to, to, to court, to take a matter to court, mm -hmm. that will have legal they can be aid. Represented. Right? That's right. They can be mm -hmm. represented, that we can have legal aid. You know, so s whatever framework... So at that least they would know that they wouldn't have to worry about that and they can fight for that right without worry. That's right. Definitely. What's been done on the, on, on the ground? I know um, discussions like ours will mm -hmm. help, but what's been done to ensure that St. Lucians understands this is, this is coming? Right. So what the Department of Sustainable Development has done uh, in the process of doing as well, is that we, with every agreement or every piece of legislation, there is a public awareness campaign. You must consult with the public. And so not only are we doing radio and television programs, we are also on the ground, going into the communities and speaking with the persons on the ground. So uh, we will be, and in fact, we are in the process as I speak, we have consultations ongoing. Uh, we go into the communities and we have what is known as town hall meetings. You call the people in, you make a presentation on the um, agreement, so you explain what it means to them. So in a language that they understand, okay? And so we don't just do it in English. We go into a community, say, if it's a- Using the mother tongue. That's right, using the mother tongue. Mm -hmm. So we do that, which is another ac um, access, is, and that is another component yes, to access. being able to access That's it. right. So mm -hmm. if you speak in a language that the people don't understand, that is not access. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so we are providing the information in a language that they understand in a, in, in a manner that they can respond and they can part, uh, participate. So we are hoping that we will be speaking with the National Workers Union, we'll be speaking with the Chamber, we've reached out to all those organizations and to the persons on the ground. Uh, so we are in the Sufre community, we are in Miku, we are in all corners of the, of the community getting feedback. So nobody can now come and say we didn't consult. Very good. I am very appreciative of you being here. Thank you and very much. And of course, much. I wish you the best with this. We will speak again later as the, the process continues. So all the best to you and, of course, this agreement. Thank you very much, Chris. It was a pleasure being here today. All right. Well, that's Let's Talk for you. Another program comes your way next week. On behalf of the entire production team, thanking my guest, uh, um, Kate Wilson, of the Sustainable Development Department, the legal officer, and, of course, the entire production team, thanking you for watching. Until next time. Let's talk. Let's talk.